Good morning, welcome back to a vintage story tutorial. I thought I would do a tutorial on starting farming seeds. I'm just going to do some basic tips to get, get you going. This is not going to be the full comprehensive video on farming. It's not going to go into stats. It's not going to go into reams of maths and stuff like that. It's just going to get you started. So let's begin. Right, guys, let's talk about soil. There are three types of soil on which you can grow crops. There's low fertility soil, medium fertility soil and terra preta. Now, terra preta is rare if you see it collected. It's very easy to collect soil. Basically, you just bash it with your hand, block comes up. No problem, and that applies to terra preta as well. There are other substances, which are gravel, sand, things like this, but if you want to grow crops, these three are what you will need. Now, it's very hard to see the difference. If you see terra preta soil in the ground, you, you can't really see it easily when you're focused on grass because the grass will tell you it's grass and it's tall grass. If you go to a bare block, it will tell you it's low fertility soil. The best way to tell what soils you've got around is to look at the side of them. Now, my home here is in a desert. So all the soil around here is going to be low fertility soil as far as the eye can see. So you can grow crops on low fertility soil, but it's much, much slower. It will repay your investment in time to travel towards an area which is, uh, you know, more fertile and to collect some medium soil and to bring it back. Even if it's only a little to start with, it will help. Terra preta, you can only really see from the sides and it's a black look to it. So you have your soil. <laughs> now, what do you need to farm? You need soil, water, seeds and a hoe. So to make a hoe, you just it's very easy. Just take your flint and you're looking for the flint hoe head. You just nap round the outside like that. Very, very easy. No problems at all. Okay. And then you just take your flint hoe head. Here we are. And you just obviously a stick for a handle and you have a hoe right now. You need to irrigate this but I'm going to show you something before I start on irrigation and that is if you right click with your hoe you then get dry farmland before you hoe you can't tell the nutrients when it's hoed it will tell you what nutrient levels you've got if you look at the top box and the growth speeds of the crops so the nutrient levels here are N25 P25 and K25 it's very low fertility so the growth speed is only 60% if you look at the medium soil right you've got 50% immediately that's again an ink that's doubled the speed at which it will grow essentially neither it would grow at 90% but the nutrients are doubled so 50% all the way through now I am NOT gonna hoe this block because once you have hoed a block, if you pick it up, it disappears. So once you've hoed your soil, you can't move it. So don't put your terra preta down, which is incredibly valuable, until you know where you want it. I'm going to show you some terra preta that is hoed. And I'm going to have to go to my own farm for this because I don't want to lose even when I'm sort of slightly later in the game where I have, I'm pretty well set up, but I don't want to lose even one block of terra preta. So let's go inside 
and I will show you the difference because if you look at the terra preta and let me find a bit that's see now I've been growing in that normally it's 80% I've been growing crops in there so the N is only 58% but when you first put it down there you are oh I've been growing P in there <laughs> but you get the idea normally when you first put it down it'll be N 80% P 80% K 80% and the crop growing time uh, it will show you how long for each crop. So this is, if you can find this soil by looking at it sideways in a hillside, if you ever see black soil, collect it. But to start off with, medium soil is good enough. Now, the point about soil is that it has to be irrigated. So, you can't move water easily until you have a saw which is a bit later in the game so in other words if you want to farm you have to bring the soil to the water and you have to bring the crops to the water so if you're lucky enough to find as I did uh, I did a, a tutorial world I found one block of water that's fantastic but normally you will find a pond even in deserts, you can find a pond and you can replace the soil with medium dirt. Now, all you do is just lift the soil. It's not an issue. OK, and then you just put down your medium soil. And a, you can actually grow. You can grow crops on low fertility soil, but if you right click now if you watch this it will become irrigated and if you that's the medium fertility and you can see the difference that's the low fertility it's got this gray look let's take that up and that will disappear that block I will have lost it so I'm going to take up just three rows here to start with and just to start us off now water will irrigate three blocks away so grow everything within three blocks of the water but also if you it will irrigate that block that block and that block so if you go out diagonally that's your measure and just hoe this in Let's leave that to irrigate, and the next thing you're going to need, of course, is going to be seeds. So where do you find seeds? Almost everywhere. And when you first start playing the game, it can be a bit confusing. Let's go this way, see if we can find some seeds. There's normally some around somewhere. Um, I've been over this area quite a lot, so you just run around. Now, as you run around, look at the sides of the blocks and it will tell you what sort of soil you've got. And obviously you would be collecting berry, oh, hello, hyena, berry bushes as you go and things like that. Now, growing flax. Let's keep an eye on that hyena. He's coming closer to me. You can see when you look at the seeds, the growth stage six out of nine. To get this to nine out of nine, you'd actually have to stay here Basically, I found out that with wild seeds, they're not going to grow. Some you'll get seeds from, some you won't. You'll often get a seed, and it's worth doing. So you have your seeds. And let's just take some extra food as we go. Never one to waste food, even at the late stages of the game. There you are. Look, spelt, eight of nine. Oh, we got a seed there. Yeah. I'm starving, let me just eat something. And this one is only two out of nine. Take the risk, look, I got a seed. Four out of nine, take the risk, another seed. So it's no use leaving crops that are never gonna grow out here in the ground when you need food. 
Now there is a menace around that will eat every single crop you've got and will just leave you without your carefully hoarded crops. And that's rabbits. Now rabbits will spawn where there's long grass. Rabbits can't jump too high, so your easiest route to protect your crops from rabbits is to put a too high wall around your very precious crops. Now what you must do, of course, is to remember that you need the water next to the crops, so don't forget, and you're going to destroy some water blocks doing this, but you need your water. So lay it out like that. Okay, and then you can make ladders out of sticks, as you know. Put a ladder in. Then you can get in and out easily and put one on the other side. And the other thing is you do not want drifters in here with you. Now, obviously, these are new earth blocks. And if you just leave them, they're going to grass over. And they will grow long grass and your rabbits will join in. So even though you're going to lose the blocks of earth, hoe the top of your wall and then the rabbits don't spawn up here. And then you have your first little farm. You've got moist soil. Okay, and it's irrigated. Okay, so you've got a nice little farm now. When you look at your seeds, open up E so that you can move your cursor around. Now, if you look on your seed, run your cursor over your seed, it will tell you that a flax seed needs the nutrient K. And it will take 50 and it will grow in 4.2 days. The spelt needs N, a different nutrient it will grow in 4.4 days. So these seeds need a different nutrient. Now we go into crop rotation here, which is, I'm going, I've got three spelt seeds. So I'm gonna put those three there, there, and there. Okay, and it tells me that they're at growth stage one out of nine. Do not harvest them until they are nine out of nine. So there's, N planted and flax that's a turnip is K so let's put K there okay so far so good now I'm going to go and get more seeds the one I'm finding least of are seeds that need P I tend to have more seeds that need N and K than P, but let's get our crop rotation going here. So I'm just going to pick up some more seeds. Now when I store them, I store them so that I can see what I've got. Now we had, uh, we've had 3N, we've got 1K, so I'll take another 2K, and both of those were cereals, and I need a P and I know that onions will give me P, okay? So, and you can eat raw cereal, guys. It's, and flax is very, very valuable early on because that's what's going to give you the um, unnecessary linen in order to make linen bags and it will increase your inventory space. Right, let me put a ladder here. Okay. Oh, of course, it won't attach to tilde. Right, so we've got N. This is our K. Yeah, flax. So let's put another two down. All right. And then the third one, third type of seed, takes P. Okay, so we have one row of N, one row of K, one row of P. 
and that means that when these are grown and this one will take does it tell me how long it will take it doesn't it's one of seven that will grow first that's one of nine one of nine okay you can rotate your crops so that once these are grown you rotate them around i'm going to go to my own farm to show you how to do that now on top of here you've got tilled earth all right now the question is could we put a berry bush on tilled earth because if we can we can make even more use of this area now i saw a berry bush over here let's go and see if we can pick one up prairies are brilliant for seeds and berry bushes they're also infested with hyenas here we are and I'm sure that you would all have been collecting masses of berry bushes now berry bushes of course attract raccoons so the last thing you want to do is where you've got trees and remember I'm growing trees all along here as a tree farm uh, I I have had raccoons spawn there here so they say they only spawn in forests why take the risk and you can use the top of your wall that's too high raccoons can't get at it so here you have seeds growing in there totally protected and the other great benefit of tilled earth is that it doesn't just spawn grass which it will do but don't worry the hares won't spawn on the tilled earth because it's just one pixel lower than the rest of it the game doesn't recognize it as a whole block and they'll only spawn on whole blocks but so the great benefit is if you have tilled earth that's not got a crop in you might get horsetail so guys that's how you lay your crops out let's go back and i will show you a little bit more about crop rotation when it gets light right guys if you are out adventuring as i am today look at what i've found this is terra pretta can you see that that's medium soil that's terra pretta and the only reason i saw it is that i was out here and as i was coming along i saw the difference at the side but when you're on top of terra pretta it looks just like any other soil so that's why you have to look at it from the side. I'm going to dig this lot out. Good morning guys. Let's have a little bit of an in... Good morning guys. Let's have a little look at the nutrients in the soil and how you can make the most of them and replenish them. Firstly, each block of soil has three nutrients, N, P and K, nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Now, each crop only uses one nutrient. So each crop has its own preferred nutrient. So if you look at my seeds, rye, and turn it. If you look at the top line, it says required nutrient N. I don't have any P. Rice seeds required nutrient K. Now the crops that require N are rye, spelt, turnip, and cabbage. Mine are actually planted at the moment. That's why they're not here. The crops that require P are onion and parsnip and pumpkins. I've been playing 300 hours. I haven't yet found pumpkins. That's the luck of the draw sometimes. And the ones that require K are flax, rice, carrot and soybean. So you have different crops requiring different nutrients. Now, what I've done here is in this bed, and I've got a mixture of medium soil and terra pretta. I've been collecting terra pretta. So here, the onions need P. So I've got two lines of onions that will use 
a huge amount of the P nutrient out of the soil. Here we've got growing rye and this is where my cabbage is and my spelt. So these crops need N so they'll take the N out of the soil and then in the next bed I've got flax, carrots, bit of more flax. They require K so they're going to take K out of the soil and then here I've got a bed that I would like to have left fallow but I'm actually growing up some plants here. So what you do is when you've harvested this lot you will find that because they've used up all the pea you can put another crop in provided it's not pea and provided you haven't grown something before. Now if you look at this soil it's going down to just over 30% N, 30% P, 30% K out of 50% which is medium. So that whole bed is going to need to lie fallow to recover. This one, this line, again it needs to lie fallow because it's going to be below 50% for all the key nutrients. They, they've used up the end. This is the end of a crop rotation. Here you've got the same issue. K I could grow, that's going to have 50% but the rest won't. Then in this one, remember you're looking for 80% on terra preta. I could probably do P at 80%. I have very few plants that use P. And then over here, where they've used up the K, again I can put N and P in there because the K has been used up but the N is 80%, the P is 80%. So you'd have to look at every row on that. So what you do is you just take your, basically when you start, you take your plants out of here, move them to here, take them out of here, move them to here, take them out and then they can lie fallow or they go over to this bed. So you grow different crops in your beds according to which nutrients have been used up. Now the great thing is if you can grow, if you can have extra beds like this, particularly this one, you just let them lie fallow. Now this has got N depleted, P is a bit depleted, K is at 80%. I could grow K, but in my view, it's better to let the whole bed lie fallow. So it's all about very basic crop rotation. You put a crop in the new ground, it depletes one of the nutrients. You then put another crop in, which uses the second of the nutrients. And then the third crop uses the third of the nutrients. After that, it may have replenished on one of the nutrients. It is more likely that you will have to leave it fallow. So, if we go and look at our little starter farm out here, over here. You soon get used to this, by the way, guys. I'm so used to crop rotation here. Uh, and in fact, I was used to it anyway because my grandfather had a small holding. So I was used to crop rotation in any event. Now, look at this, guys. Nothing has eaten our crops, which is a plus. Our red cuddlet bushes will flower in less than a day. So if we come down here, yeah, our onions. Now, if you look at the soil level, they need P. So if you look at the soil level, N is 50, K is 50, but P is down to 27. The flax, you can see it's using up the K. N is 50, P is 50, but K is down to 19. And where you've got the spelt, it's using the N. The N is at 30, the P is at 50, the K is at 50. So these three can rotate. But once you've rotated them once, you are likely to have to extend your little farm, which is just a matter of extending it in the same way we did. And then you have your berry bushes on the top and nothing has eaten them. So that's 
very very basic crop rotation it's just a question of looking at what your crop requires and looking at the amount of that nutrient in the soil and you will very very swiftly get the hang of it a couple of other things i could just have one block here of water and grow a whole field round it three deep all the way round. i don't have to have long lines of water like this but i use the water as a crop because i grow cooper's reeds in it like this and i harvest them as a crop so you can see i'm growing another crop there which is the cooper's reeds and the reason I do that is that you need Cooper's reeds to make bee skeps. So seeing as I am trying to get this place well lit, I harvest the Cooper's reeds for my bee skeps. So again, nothing is going to waste. Even the water block is not going to waste. Well, guys, I hope you found that very, very basic tutorial useful. And... It has not covered the fact that we do have artificial fertilizers in the game. You can use bones for fertilizer. You can use phosphorus for fertilizers. You can buy that off traders. Um, so there are fertilizers within the game. However, the other thing you can do is to grow your own soil. If you can't find terra preta, you can put rot in a barrel and grow compost. But I haven't covered that in this because this is a very, very basic guide and it's meant just to get you going. So I hope that's useful. If it is, leave a like, 